thanks for the introduction. I hope you can all hear me. Uh, my name is Pascal. I'm a professor at Humboldt State University. And uh, one of the classes I teach is a class in forest restoration. Um, this is my uh, research team and um, I'm going to be talking about uh, management to restore aspen and it's uh, it's been a privilege to work on aspen in the Tahoe Basin for uh, over 11 years now. So we've established 10 study sites around the basin. We have uh, seven sites that have been restored by cutting uh, smaller conifers, not all the conifers, just smaller conifers, piling and burning. And we also have three no cut controls spread around the lake. So um, these are permanent installations. And at each site, we're monitoring uh, one hectare, two and a half acre permanent plots. Here are four examples of those sites. We've got tree locations mapped pre treatment. We're monitoring trees. Uh, regen and vegetation in subplots. Those are those uh, grey circles on transects throughout each site. And um, we're also monitoring burn piles. And, and um, early on, this data gave us an indication of how much conifer were in these stands. And so the table at the bottom here shows that the conifer uh, represented from about 50% to about 90% of the, um, the stocking in these, these particular aspen stands. So is there really a problem? Uh, that leads me to ask the question, how crowded is it? How, um, how much competition is there? And for that, the, the foresters like basal area as a metric. Basal area equation is provided here. All you need is your trees per acre and your DPH and you get a basal area estimate. And um, more recently, folks are adopting stand density index as a, as a more precise measure of how crowded is it. And so in this particular stand on the South Shore, we have an SDI of 1,000 in metric units or 400 English units. And the black dots are conifers on here, so it looks pretty crowded, but it's nice to have a, a number. So we, we developed this graph to help us understand how crowded is it. So stand density index on the y-axis and species composition on the x. And this red line represents 60% uh, of the maximum stand density for aspen and anything above 60% we're expecting uh, mortality to be imminent. So it's better to be below that line. Um, above the line, you've got excessive competition for aspen. The conifer is still okay up there, but the aspen is, is enduring competition. This is the South Shore stand that we just looked at. It's uh, just above the line. And this um, this tells us that this it's high time to do some restoration. The uh, the the red star in the bottom that would represent uh, a stand replacing fire. So if we had a stand replacing fire in the basin, which we hope we don't, we would end up at zero stand density, and it would be a pure aspen stand that would regenerate. But we can't do that in the basin because there are many cabins and homes. And Instead, uh, restoration uh, appears to be uh, an imperative. This is the direction that a stand goes. It moves up in stand density as trees grow and aspen will be replaced by conifers. And this is the direction re restoration ought to be taking us. And so we've developed this concept for, um, for our uh, forest manager partners and the agencies and this is this concept of this green zone of, of this is sort of a, a target or a goal. If you can try to get your stand into this green area, you would be well served because you've reduced stand density and you've increased the, the percent of aspen and you've reduced conifer. So this is a useful chart for us. Uh, this is the same stand, the South Shore stand. And what we're looking at here is the um, crown rise. So uh, with competition crowns retreat, this, this tree has a very, very small crown, uh, low vigor. And this graph that um, we've created shows us the effect of stand density on the x-axis at the bottom and um, crown ratio of aspen. And so over time, 
with uh, increasing stand density, we see a drop off in crown ratio and, vig and that's an indicator of vigor. So really the green zone um, of a desired condition, desired future condition, or even a desired current condition would be to get us back to um, high vigor with long green crowns. Here are some vigorous young aspen, aspen saplings, and they're in an opening and they've got crown ratio is almost down to uh, 75, 80% very vigorous young trees. These young trees have enough vigor and growth rate to recruit to the overstory and replace aging aspen. Looking at the growth rates of young aspen, uh, which are the future of these stands to replace the aging overstory, uh, the height increment or the growth rate per year is um, enhanced by a more um, intense restoration treatment. So if there's a more conifer removal, we're gonna see a greater response in terms of the young trees growing. And also um, there's a benefit to having less fir trees in the vicinity. We're finding that fir is impacting the, um, the growth of young aspen. I'm not sure about the mechanism, this is just correlation. So the green zone here, the target would be to have an aspen dominated stand and that could be created by heavier cutting. There's another graph from that same paper with uh, Stephanie Capetto and um, Shana Gross, uh, great collaborators with the Forest Service. We found that um, height increment declined with increasing fir base salaria. So it wasn't just any conifer, it seemed as if the fir trees as neighbors were, um, were causing a decline in aspen growth rates. And also we see the effect of crown ratio here. The, the best growth is happening when aspen have a high crown ratio in aspen dominated stands. Something else we studied was understory vegetation cover. And uh, we want understory vegetation cover for various reasons. And so um, here we see an interesting relationship where the, um, we have high vegetation cover in situations where there's less conifer, but also um, where there's more understory light. So we can either provide more understory light or just have a, a crowded aspen stand. As long as it's pure aspen or tending towards pure aspen, we should have good ground cover, regardless of how much light is reaching the understory. Another interesting finding. Looking now to a uh, restoration treatment. We do these treatments. This one here was with the 14 inch diameter limit. So everything less than 14 inches DBH was cut. How long does this treatment remain effective? Uh, is the question we're asking ourselves because we cut numerous small conifers, but the stand density was only reduced by a quarter. So we did relieve some crowding, but it didn't, uh, as it turns out, it didn't last that long, the, the effect. And so here we did some um, modeling work where we looked at treatment persistence. Some people call it treatment longevity. How long does it last? And so after that treatment that I just showed you here before, this, this thinning treatment, we removed some conifers, but uh, the stand still remains conifer dominated. And the treatment um, only really persisted for 15 years in this particular scenario. So uh, another treatment will be required in 2024. And for the planners out there, that's just around the corner in some sense. So uh, here's, here's uh, the same stand, but now the third graph on the right shows the burn piles that were created from that treatment. And this is why we couldn't cut any more. And that was because there were 50 piles to the acre created. And 10% of the ground area in that stand was covered in burn piles. So there's no way you could thin any more than that. So this needs to be a multi-step thinning process. That's a lot of burn piles. Well, we're monitoring those burn piles. And what we have is um, annual assessments of the vegetation in the burn piles. Uh, now it's seven sites. And what we're seeing here is we're seeing, and you can see it here in this picture, this is a burn pile where aspen suckers are regenerating. We're getting some grasses and some herbaceous vegetation. And we're seeing a recovery that's variable but uh, is in the order of 35 to 70% after uh, several years. So it's taking a while, but um, 
I'm excited to mention that uh, Jen Brumbelow, a graduate student at Humboldt State, um, is studying biodiversity in these burn piles and in these stands. You may have visited Jen's poster. I hope you got a chance to see her poster, which is in our conference here, the NAC. And so I'll just um, quickly point out something that uh, Jennifer was very excited about was looking at the graphs at the bottom, the left-hand pie chart shows the, uh, all the species surrounding a burnt pile. So there's definitely high diversity in these stands in the understory, but then look at the pie chart on the right. That is the diversity of species found within this particular pile. So uh, after some years, we are seeing a recovery in terms of cover and also now biodiversity. So um, Jen's at the early stages of her project, but this, this work should be uh, coming out in the next couple of years. Um, now, our most recent study is with uh, looking at the conifer uh, and aspen regeneration after the pile burning. And what we're seeing in these stands overall, this is throughout the entire stand, in the top graph, you're going to see aspen regeneration is declining. It's declining. We've been monitoring this over time before and after. So this is a negative change. This is a change in the uh, uncut control stands, whereas in all the treated stands, we are seeing a, um, a fairly consistent increase in aspen regeneration post-treatment. So that's the good news. And at the bottom, we have the conifer graph. Now, in this context, we don't want conifers because conifers are the ones that are invading and, and uh, replacing the aspen. So in this situation, we're seeing a consistent decline in conifer in the treated stands and a lot of variability. There's the wide error bars. And we're even seeing a slight dec decline in the uh, untreated stands of conifers. And we think that's because of the study period, which runs 2009 to uh, 2015, and that uh, that time frame encompasses the um, the regional drought that we suffered. So we think that uh, regeneration may have just declined because of other reasons. Okay, and the last piece of this is the uh, how fast are those little conifers growing? Now this is interesting to folks who are doing restoration because they do their restoration and they see a new cohort of of conifers arising then that's just a future problem. And so these conifer seedlings, how fast do they grow? And here it's how long do they take to reach breast height or four and a half feet above the ground? And uh, really it ba it's based on the um, retention of the overstory. So if you keep a very sparse overstory by doing a, um, a heavy cutting, as seems to be a good idea in most cases, then what we're seeing is it it takes the conifers between 14 to 20 years to reach breast height. So this is a good news story because even if we do heavy cutting, it's going to take us 20 years or so before the conifers get to four and a half feet height and so they can easily be treated. Uh, they're small and they don't represent much fuel, fuel load, hazardous fuel load. So, so uh, that is good news. So wrapping up now, management implications. Pulling this all together, what we've learned over this decade or more of, of uh, field study is that heavy cutting is favoring aspen and the understory plants. It's giving us a longer treatment persistence, which is good, but the conifer fuel load becomes excessive. So we can't treat too much in one go. And so that means we're going to need multiple treatments in these remote areas. Now, what I mean is that in remote areas, we don't have roads, so we can't remove the conifer fuels. They have to be treated in situ, and that's um, requiring piling and burning, which is, um, so we have limits on how much we can cut at each entry. We're seeing from the burn pile research, I haven't shown some of this uh, work, but we're seeing that the smaller aspen trees are being injured by the heating and um, we've heard about that earlier on today in the session, in a prior session. The, the aspen are all injured by fire, but particularly small aspen are being injured. But after these pile burns, they're regenerating rapidly inside and around the piles. 
and the conifers are more slow to regenerate. So we, we, we're succeeding in giving Aspen an advantage. And then my last point here is we, we're finding Aspen mixed with these ancient conifers, such as the picture shown on the left. And it suggests that Aspen has coexisted with conifer for centuries. So um, it's not like we have to eradicate conifer, but at the present time, we have way too many conifers that are less than 150 year old. They're getting bigger and they're, um, they're causing competition and a, a loss in vigor of the aspen. So in the absence of stand replacing fire, we really do need to uh, actively restore these stands. This is a list of my um, wonderful collaborators and all the agencies around the basin and uh, a list of the literature cited here today. So if we have any time for questions. Yes, um, we have one from Tom Diltz um, and he asks, would it be better to combine with prescribed fire? Oh yeah, what a cool question. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so prescribed fire is uh, being practiced on a very limited basis, but it's difficult in the basin because in the Tahoe Basin we have so few days when the um, the weather for, for burning aligns with burn plans and um, availability of resources. The other issue is we have a lot of hazardous fuels in these stands because oftentimes we've got a uh, coarse woody debris and, and also finer fuels have accumulated in these aspen stands to a point where prescribed burning would probably have too high of a fire severity. So the idea is here that we'll do this maybe one or two rounds of thinning, piling, burning the piles, and then these stands should be ready to reintroduce fire. That would be very, very sensible. Um, Tom, good idea. And I feel like at that point, the fire could move through the stand and might help us um, reduce densities of the regenerating young conifers because the young conifers are, uh, will, should be susceptible to fire. Okay, um, we have one more question and then we'll move on to our next and final speaker. Um, this one is from Betsy and the question is, are there opportunities for opening specific aspen areas up for Christmas tree permits to remove some of the conifer biomass from the site. <laughs> Genius. Yes, wonderful. What a wonderful idea. Let's, um, I hope that all the folks at the LTBMU are listening to that yeah. concept. That's a, just a wonderful suggestion and I, I'd never thought of that. I've been, I've been on this for years and I've thought about girdling big conifers to eliminate a few conifers. There, there's you can pile material and burn it beside conifers to, to kill the, the cambium to reduce the density of conifers. But um, that, that's a great suggestion. I, uh, I defer to, the, to the, uh, the agency landowner managers. All right, well, perhaps that can come up in our um, facilitated discussion at the end of our symposium. Pascal, thank you very much. Great talk.